I love me some casting kill lane. I love, I love me some Optimus Tom, some Trinity Force podcast, GG Chronicle, all the good stuff. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have to mention it in the zone. Oh, yes. Don't forget that we love Razor Weapons Media. Oh, and of course, Razor Weapons Media for bringing us in here and letting us cast these games. So as you guys out there, do, do not forget to go check them out over on YouTube. Check them out on Reddit. Check us out as we are sitting here watching the picks and bands go down, just kind of bullshitting a little bit as we wait for some of them to come, you know, mm -hmm. come out. You guys, if you want to check out what exactly the Judgment Tournament is from Razor Weapons Media, there's a tiny URL link to a Reddit thread. It has all the details, multiple links to their own website, their YouTube channel, any other video explanations, etc., etc., etc. So you guys can head over, check it out, tinyurl.com slash R-Y-W Judgment, and it's going to fill out all your, you know, any questions you have. They will be fulfilled, and they will be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Just like a good night with that blonde that you met at the bar that wasn't so hot after you brought her home. Well, that's because she's blonde, and you don't you don't like I don't like blondes. I love a blonde. What's I, wrong with a blonde? I really it, all right. It has to be like a platinum blonde. A platinum blonde, you mm -hmm. say? Yes. No, I, I like all. I like them all. Women are fantastic. Also, happy birthday to Shayton. He's watching the stream right now. Oh. Man, you are a fantastic brother. Fantastic father. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yes, happy birthday indeed. If this was Reddit, you'd have a little piece of cake next to your name. It is your cake day, and this is what you get for it. No karma. You just get us saying happy birthday. So, yeah. and... <laughs> so are we on the Pixies band screen, Tom? I'm um, waiting for the last band to go down so we can spend a little bit of time talking about them while we flush out the picks. But they, uh, there's a lot of, de of deliberation going on in these picks and bands, Bonophobia. So, uh... you know, and it's not the normal picks and bands either, which makes this even more fantastic. Maybe we'll see some play that we don't normally see because right now I don't even see a Shen, Shaco, or Kassadin band. Hope none of them. No, I don't see either of them. As I will pan over there in just one second, I just need to make sure that, uh, yep, everything looks to be a okay. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Picks and bans going down right mm. now. Protophobia, why don't you run down who they are banning out while I advertise this on all the uh, many, many mediums that I can. Well, first of all, this is Otter versus TK Rain. Otter is the blue team, obviously with the team captain Otter, or Otter, and a purple team with TK Rain being the team captain over there. So, blue team banning out Anivia, Janna, and Lee Sin. We've seen Anivia come back as Froggen has been playing her a lot re recently in the mid. She has uh, two lives, one with her death, and then another if she comes back after being egged. Janna, a fantastic support, really seen a resurgent late resurgence lately, even after her just minor changes that she's seen in the last patch note, still a very, very viable and disgustingly good support in the bottom lane. She can disrupt fights, make it so people, you know, let, let her AD carry get away. She can... Uh, adjust the mistakes of anybody that you know any of the team makes at least in that level two gank coming out of the top lane that that tom over here is going to squeal so much about is a fantastic jungler fantastic tank and everything and purple team do you want me to continue doing the picks and bands for you tom i think i'm going to take over for the purple team because i like their names a little bit better did you see over here that they have banned out fizz cassiopeia and warwick now cassiopeia and warwick a little bit more of the standard kind of band. Cassiopeia is a very strong middle laner. And as we saw in the coming in the coming patch, not yet, so don't worry about that. There are some items that might make you even more of a viable champion in the middle lane. So you could possibly see more Cassiopeia bands in the future than just this one right here. But she can deal a lot of damage, has the damage over time on all of her poison skills. If she lands a poison skill on you, you're going to be taking damage over time with that debuff. But most importantly, you're going to be tagged with poison. She can use her E skill, Twin Fang, to cast it on a target with poison and it will give it a 0.5 second cooldown instead of a 3 second cooldown so she can harass down champions very very quickly only thing is she does burn through a little bit of mana but because you're in the middle lane you have access to blue buff ponophobia which means that you're going to be a deadly force to be reckoned with Top blue lane, buff you say blue buff continue Okay, <laughs> I was like, I thought I thought I said something wrong. I was like, yes, blue, not red, right? Okay, Warwick is going to be a uh, champ you can play in the jungle, although his ganks really aren't that powerful until level 6. So we have seen that people such as Darian on M5 have been playing him in the top lane to a lot, a lot of success. He has a lot of sustain on his passive and his Q ability. Even though he's not a very heavy pusher, he can get a decent amount of farm with his single target spells. He is very hard to trade with as he's going to be coming out ahead by just continuing Continuing to gain his life back, and unless you have a sustain on your character as well, Warwick's really just going to tear you to shreds up there. And then Fizz, the interesting band, you could play him in the jungle. Most of the time we see him up top. Sometimes we see him in the middle lane as a sort of like AP assassin to really go after the solo middle mage characters. So having him banned out, 
little bit interesting because normally you don't see Fizz all too often. It might be a targeted ban though. Like I said, we don't exactly know who all these people are and what champions they specifically play. They've drafted their teams. They know each other from the draft, so they may catch on to their play styles, and that's possibly why we see a Fizz ban. That, that's absolutely right. Been watching a lot of Otter. Is actually a 2300 ELO player, and he's one of those undiscovered talents where in the apparently in the bottom lane he's just a fanatic in the bottom lane just tears not people on up on the team fanatic but not on the team fanatic absolutely not no he's just an undiscovered as i said you know undiscovered talent I, I think we should see something very good come out of him especially if his lane partner is you know they mesh very well so we'll have to see you know how he lives up to that 2300 elo status Yes, indeed, because we all know that numbers are the most important thing in the world. We do see here, though, that Otter's team has completely locked in. That means there is going to be a possibility of either a solo top Corky or a solo middle Kog'Maw because there's a Vladimir pick on the team. Normally, um, I'm assuming his name is Ryok. Ryok's Vladimir would be going into the top lane as a very powerful top laner. He's going to have a lot of sustain on his person, plus he's going to really be removed from most of the fights where Vladimir has a very weak early laning phase. Is. In the top lane, it's all about his self-sustain, and therefore we could possibly see you know, him farming up and reaching his potential to be a lot stronger towards the mid and late stages of the game with his Hemo Plague, dealing ridiculous amounts of damage and amplifying damage and exploding on champions. He has his pool so he can get away. He's virtually ungankable in the top lane because of this, and then he also has his Transfuse and his Tides of Blood with a Hextech Revolver, gaining back all the HP he's going to be spending and then some to cast his spells. Very, very powerful champion up top. We saw a couple swaps going around, and I'm only going to assume this because you said that Otter plays in the bottom lane. I'm going to mm -hmm. assume it's a solo top <laughs> Vladimir, a solo middle ability power Kog'Maw, which is ridiculous because Kog'Maw has such an arsenal on him, not, you know, just not even playing off the skill, the names of his skills in bio Arcane Barrage and Living Artillery. He is literally just a walking ability power like mortar. He could sit in the back lines of everything and with champions like Leona and Mundo on his team to cause that crowd control and tank the damage. He's going to be virtually untouchable if he's playing just behind everybody and spamming those spells. Blue buff on him is going to turn him into a living machine gun, and he is excellent for sieging tower situations. So is Corky, who would be going on the bottom with Leona, prompting a bit of an aggressive lane on the bottom. Corky and Kog'Maw's ultimates are going to make this team kind of like a poke, not necessarily a poke comp. I'm going to go ahead and call it a siege comp. You're going to be people, yeah. you're going to see like five man pushes on towers where they're going to push the enemy team towards their tower and instead of just trying to like poke and get them away from the tower they're gonna poke and try to kill them and then walk away from the tower I think that's what's gonna happen so very very interesting to see that Corky Leona gonna be aggressive on the bottom lane Leona of course has a lot of crowd control in her Q and E combo she can absorb damage with her W and of course her ultimate is ridiculous the AoE stun or slow Corky has Valkyrie to go in and out of sticky situations shredding armor true damage is ridiculous and then have one of the fastest junglers in the game on their side in Dr. Mundo Man, you just spent like 20 minutes on blue team over here. Purple team, actually, I was going to look at the other <laughs> side. They have quite a number of CC on their side as they have Kennen with that ultimate that will stack the stacks of the lightning rush on it, or lightning on a heal, lightning rush in, pop his W, stun the entire team. Vayne leveling up her Condemn, which is her E, will be able to push people into the wall, especially bottom lane with that uh, very aggressive comp of the Corky Leona versus mm -hmm. the uh, more sustainy of the Lulu, but Lulu is a heavy harass character, so this bottom lane is going to probably see a lot of a lot of work going into it as Lulu slows with her um, Q, and then she has help picks, and as well as the polymorph off her W, and she'll be able to stop anybody who comes in. So if Leona, Leona comes in on anybody, we'll see a Lulu polymorph in either the AD carry or Leona stopping any kind of damage that's going to come in. So it should be a very interesting lane. Now going top lane, we see Shen running without teleport. However, he is running Ignite, so in a very aggressive Shen, followed by the Nautilus with the CC up top. He does have a taunt, which taunts you for a few seconds. Uh, Nautilus with his dredge from dredge line from his Q and his ultimate. He's also got a slow and his passive stops you right in place. They have a lot of CC on this purple team. Yeah, they definitely do. And the one thing you have to also um, you have to also keep in mind is with um, with Lulu and Leona in the bottom lane being you know Lu Leona of course is going to be going for brush control. Lulu is going to be having t uh, the ability to really slow down with that glitter lance. You have to remember glitter lance can go through targets that it hits. It doesn't necessarily stop when it hits something. So if that Corky and Leona position themselves to try to go in and engage on to that vein, vein can tumble out of the way and uh, a 
Glitterlance would be devastating in that fact because Luke will be able to tag both of them. They will both be slowed, so they'll be a little disoriented and in like out of position. Vayne can then come in with a Condemn. If they're close enough to a wall, it's a stun. If not, it's a way to get out of there. And like I said, you could see this Lulu being aggressive with it, or you could see her playing very protective. On top of the, uh, the Shen mention you said, he's not running Teleport. He still has his ultimate, though. So once we hit level 6, they're going to have to keep that in mind because Shen could use that to try to take Dragon Control away from bottom lane. We got to keep in mind as well, Shen with that ultimate and Lulu with that ultimate. That's mm. a lot of heals and having to help picks to gain an extra shield. They have a lot of shielding on their team. They got a lot of everything, Ponophobia. But you know what they don't have? A lot of this game getting underway yet. We're still on the loading screen. Like <laughs> there we go. Now we're going to be getting in. And now the screen goes white, and then it's going to go black, and then it's going to go white, and it's going to go black. And then it'll finally load up with the skin war, which is our favorite part of the game. Well, I hope, hopefully uh, I can cast with you, Tom, as my screen, League of Legends, crashed as I was walking in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, indeed. So I hope, how's that skin war working out for you? Oh, well, you see, the skin war is working out great because we have the new Warlord Shen skin on top of Arctic Warfire Cannon that Antran no doubt bought on sale a week or two ago, just like I did. My dog is so excited for this skin war. I don't know about you. We also have Iron uh, Iron Solari Leona in the bottom lane with Lion, Dan Lion Dance Kogma. And then we have Earth Rider Corky rounding everything out. So it's very, very awesome. That's my Ooh, dog. Earth Rider is... Corky going on sale very soon. Oh, I cannot yes, wait yes. to buy that. Man, your dog is going nuts. I... I'm actually sitting in queue waiting. I don't know. Does this, will this allow me to get back into the game? It should allow you to get back into the game. It should be fine. You have. I want to reconnect. Well, as we wait here, Tom, please continue to tell us what is going on. As you are, are you on the loading screen still? I am still on the loading screen. Don't worry. Tally Marks Leon is taking a little bit while to load in, and so is Lulu, whose name I'm not going to attempt to even pronounce because uh, it's too many, too many vowels. Soyuruda. 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 It sounds like a, a move from Street Fighter. Like Hadouken. Mm, like Shoryuken. <laughs> Tetsuaki Sabugen. Would you like some pound cake? Mm. I'm sure you've seen that one. I'd like some pound cake. Ah, uh, we are now into the game. Tom, how far are you in the game? I am four at... Four or five seconds? Yeah, four or five seconds. All right, fantastic. We are the same. We are here. I can do my play-by-plays, which I'm the best at. Mm -hmm. You guys listen true. to this voice because I'm going to be watching and doing all the play-by-plays for you guys while Tom breaks down each of the plays that happen after they happen. Yes, indeed. Yes, I will. And, of course, uh, i got to give a quick shout-out to our awesome overlay. It's awesome. I love this overlay. Really Look at me. Is. I'm all Jarvan, like all stoic and awesome. <laughs> and I'm Leona because I had to save your ass when you act like an idiot. Because you're a girl. Sure, let's go with that. Because you're a giant girl. Um, I guess so. We could go with giant girl. I Lots mean, of things going down up here. Blue trying like. to figure out. Blue <laughs> trying to figure out where purple team is. Purple team going to walk down here in the bush, going to meet Corky in here. Nice ultimate, or nice taunt comes out of Shen as they put the damage down on there. Dredge line, Ignite comes out. First blood for Shen. That's five, all five people, pick, or four people picking up an assist. Huh, that's uh, not a 2300 ELO play, Ponophobia. I'm going to tell you that right <laughs> now. I may not have expert analysis like uh, Sotair from our GG Conical crew does, but uh, I'm telling you right now, it's not a 2300 play to be standing in there without your support character and knowing that there's a possibility of a jungle in Oh, here we go. Nice. Dredge line comes Comes out and glitter lands. Boom! That's another kill for TK Reign's team. Purple team just doing the work down here, and they will be able to counter jungle very hard, taking this race and the red. Those 2300 plays just not happening for the blue team right now. No, but it does look like they're going to get a red buff possibly stolen, if not just the rates and then the mini golems on top of this. Uh, oh, well, look at Mundo walk over here. He's actually going to decide the counter jungle itself, which is a very good play on his side, as he'll be able to start on and get the red buff from the opposite side, but it looks like purple team did not decide to go for the red buff. They're going to actually start over onto blue. So even though they gave up two kills, they're losing some of their jungle for this early invade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but those two kills really went, uh, they went to Kennen, who's going to be playing in the middle lane uh, against that Kog'Maw, which is going to be really good because Kennen can CS and harass at the same time. So any advantage over Kog'Maw, especially in the early stages of the game, is going to be a deficit that's going to be very, very hard for the uh, Void creature to overcome in this circumstance. Nautilus is still going to get his blue buff, which he really needs to move throughout the jungle with really, really e extreme efficiency. And Shen's heading the top lane with a kill over Vladimir. So the characters that got the kills are the ones that really need to press their early game advantages to stop the snowball effects from blue side. No, oh, absolutely. That's a you know, great great way to put it, but having those extra kills as well allowed Shen to go back and get a ruby crystal. Now he's up quite a bit of life on this Vladimir, sitting at 751 life to Vladimir's 529. Vladimir's going to play very passive up in this top lane as Shen has walked over there and is level 2 already. Think about the numbers of damage he can do. 
This is true. Shen is going to have that experience bonus over Vladimir, which means that he is constantly going to be slightly ahead of him in lane. And if he forces that Vladimir back, that's only going to be an exponentially increasing advantage there. Same thing is going to be going on for Kennen in the middle lane, as he had a little bit more experience from leashing for Nautilus. So, very, very awesome advantages already popping out for these teams. You can see Kennen in the middle lane already hitting level 3, where Kama is still at level 2. Unfortunately, my little character displays are not even popping up in the bottom, so I don't know how far ahead in experience he is at this point. I just know that it's visibly one level right now. Uh, half, almost half a level. Ooh, uh, yes, half just level. about half a level experience. Top. That's lane. about a. That's about an almost an entire creep camp in the jungle. Yes, absolutely. And Shen actually going in here, putting quite a bit of damage down, taking Vladimir to half life and one E to Q combo. Uh, Shen um, putting two points into his Vorpal Blade early and one point in the Shadow Dance. We see blue pings going down over here. I'm assuming they're going to try to start something soon. Glitter Lands comes out of um, comes out of this Lulu saying, I know you're sitting here. They have this nice ward in the bottom brush. As you said earlier, Leona's going to be spending a lot of time trying to camp the brush. and. The more they move this lane up, the more brush that Leona's going to have control of. Mundo's walking down here from the river, both buffs up. Going to try to um, land his infected cleaver onto one of them. A nice um, E comes in over here, a W comes out, a flash into uh, Lulu walking the lane. No kills done because of those flashes, but that is blown early. Leona had a very nice engage there. Yeah, it was very, very good. Mundo actually coming out of the jungle looked a little hesitant as he uh, kind of hesitated to cast a cleaver on Vayne, kind of wanted to go for the Lulu kill there. If you were to slow Vayne down, that would have been another champion they could possibly have burned a summoner from. So I don't necessarily agree with the fact of Mundo being hesitant about it, but Lulu did have to burn Flash, burn health potions. She's extremely low. Mundo's still camping a little bit. They don't exactly know if he's going to be there or not at this point because they have the enemy side brush warded, but not their own. So they could just wind up feeling extremely passive due to the fake threat of Mundo still being in the bush. Right. Meanwhile, in the middle lane here, Kogma keeping up very well with this Kennen, sitting at one CS over him. So uh, they are exactly. Kennen is not being able to harass this Kogma as much as he's wanted to. Kogma doing a fantastic job sitting behind his minions, not allowing himself to get Shuriken to the face. Uh, we watch that Mundo is walking around here. You know, th those super fast clears on him. 21 creep kills up onto from the 18 on Nautilus, who's very slowly just lumbering around his jungle as he is a giant. Yeah, the thing is, Nautilus is a lot slower at jungle than uh, Mundo is. Mundo, like I mentioned, the champion's like one of the fastest clears in the game. Nautilus not going to be able to keep up with that. And the fact that they went for a fake invade and then went back to their blue and he already had some of his jungle missing, that's going to let Mundo not only go back and clear the jungle that he was left to have open, but also have a possibility for counter jungling Nautilus as he's moving slowly. Ponophobia, you got stuff going on in bottom lane here. Oh wow, a nice EDQ combo comes out of there, but Otter getting exhausted, not being able to do any damage. Vayne picking up the kill, flashing in though. Um, Lulu walking out of there with just very little life. How much do we got here? 66 life, she's regened a bit, so about 60 life when she got out of there. Fantastic play by Lulu with that help picks to keep her alive just enough, and that exhaust coming down at the right time, so no damage is put out by Corky. Again, that's about, what, 35% on exhaust? Yeah, 35% from the exhaust, but up top, meanwhile, we see Mundo is going to be coming with a red buff, going for a gank on Shen, he's going to taunt through that Mundo, giving a little bit of energy back dealing a little bit of damage. Mundo's going to take a quick shot from the top, but everything's going to be A-OK. -okay. Just kind of forcing Shen, giving Vladimir some breathing room. As Vladimir is beginning to push this lane, Shen has 35 CS to Vladimir's 26, and so he is very content with letting Vladimir push and then equalizing his lane. Any move, any closer to the tower means that Vladimir's going to be super overextended at this point, and with a very heavy crowd control jungle like that Nautilus, even with that pool on him, Nautilus can wait to dredge line Vladimir if he's overextended that far. He's just going to punish the vampire for being too far ahead. I need to correct myself. It's seventy percent. I apologize. I was thinking thirty-five percent. Thirty-five percent is the amount of item and damage. So if you were to use like a Deathfire Grasp, it do thirty-five percent less damage. However, you are taking seventy percent. Uh, you are doing seventy percent less damage when exhaust comes down. So it makes it a very powerful spell. And I was going to mention earlier that. Um, when they were first in the champion select, Lulu didn't, uh, they didn't have any exhaust on their side, but they have switched it over, and that seemed to be, you know, giving them the advantage down here in that bottom lane, having that exhaust, Leona not being able to uh, keep, you know, keep anybody locked down for a long enough period of time, just the disruption on Lulu just doing a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. I think I said Lulu twice, I meant Leona. That's fine, but uh, it is a little bit of a side effect of this over-aggressive lane. Corky and Leona wanted to go for kills, and they built their summoner spells around it. The support character picked up heal so that the AD carry could pick up ignite and really get those kills down as they are walking away with health potions. Actually, meanwhile, top lane, we see Shen's going to go in here um, 
as Vladimir face checked the bush to find this Nautilus, and their Nautilus was actually backing up. Their Nautilus has been sitting at level four for quite a while. I watched him earlier. He was just sat walking around in the jungle waiting for race to spawn and hasn't been able to get it. Meanwhile, Mundo is already level six with a, about a quarter experience, and he's going to come down into these bottom bushes down here. This hit for a gank. I'm hoping to put it out, but Leona having to force to blow her flash out of there. Otter trying to go in, bopping his um, Q to do some extra damage. We see the ultimate come out on Mundo and a W to come down. Vayne and trying to get the kill on that Leona. Very bad choice to try to get that kill when Leona is so tanky, especially when she pops her W. She gains, um, you know, quite a number of armor. She gains 50 armor and magic resist for a short duration when she pops that W. So not a good idea to try to go in on a, um, try to go in on a Leona, especially after her W has been down for a little bit. No, I was going to say, it was a really good job by Lulu and Vayne at the beginning points because the lane was getting aggressive again, and they're just not at the point where they can do that because of the early death on Corky and the early death on Leona. Corky, of course, not doing a terrible, terrible job in the bottom lane at farming. He's actually a couple CS ahead of Vayne, but the thing is, they just haven't gotten positions, and the warding from Lulu has been really, really good. Vayne had a little bit lost of judgment, though. Maybe thought that her silver bolts are going to proc and do a little bit extra damage to that Leona, but she had a little health potion going on. It healed her up A-OK, -okay, and she was able to tank through that damage like nothing happened so little miss you know miss kind of dive there no, but we need to talk about what's going on here an ultimate coming out of cannon and exhaust coming down that 70 percent reduced damage and i could be able to take him out we do see shen coming in here with a nice teleport into flash into e combo to, to get that kill on the mundo leona taking quite a bit of damage with the, now at a night going down this shen just doing the work Kennen actually picking up the kill on that, so good job on the bottom lane for coming up to help. We see Corky and putting some damage in, but this Shen is going to be doing the work on any of those teams that try to come in. He's just so tanky and does so much magic damage. That's normally why he's a lot of band and a lot of solo queue matches. Kog'Maw is going to try to snipe out this buff. He does have blue buffs to so be able to spam his R a little bit, but I don't think he's going to be able to take it, but... You know, I've, I've seen crazier plays at this point. Yeah, we have. He's actually going to get a Void who's done. It's not going to get him. Corky's going to get very, very low, though, as he's being chased away from Vayne on the bottom lane there. But like once again, that Shen ultimate was ridiculous. Kennen was targeted down first, popped his ultimate. He was being focused out, but he didn't lose any HP because that's exactly the amount of damage the Shen shield was going to absorb. So excellent job by Shen knowing when to come down. He's going to be rewarded by picking up a Wits End already. It is 9 minutes and 40 seconds into the game. Wits End's price has been upped by about 150 gold, but that doesn't matter to this Shen. He's already got himself a very good <laughs> item against this Vladimir in top lane. Right, not to mention sitting at 2 0 and 2 with 62 CS while Vladimir's back at 49 CS doesn't even have his gun blade yet. Mm. So he's not able to sustain himself very well versus this Shen who can just be super aggressive. We see Shen walking into the bush up here. Nice taunt comes out. Now the troll pool coming down to get him out of there. So Vlad be able to get out with that troll pool. However, that just leaves Shen the uh, free farm up top while he's forced to go back. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, too, that pool actually did more damage than Shen probably could have done with that dash and a Q. So a little bit of a bait out there by Shen. Vladimir had to pop it early. Shen probably could have just harassed down upon him. He doesn't actually have, you know, anything to slow him down with, but the magic resistance from that wit's end at this early stage of the game when Vladimir has no ability power is absolutely insane. He has 40% attack speed and 30, uh, plus 30 magic resistance against a Vladimir who I don't know if he's going to be building any, uh, any magic resistance at this part if he really has it built in. Only 46 flat magic resistance from his runes. Uh, meanwhile, point. in the middle lane down here, we see Etsu getting hooked out. Uh, Mundo trying to go in and save, but he got dredge lined into him. Now Mundo walking out of there with that Nino while you were talking. This Kog'Maw getting the work taken down on him. Yeah, and that's going to give a blue buff to Kennen. That's actually a refresh on the blue buff that Kog'Maw originally had when we saw him fighting by Dragon. So now Kennen's going to be one spamming spells against a Kog'Maw. He's not going to have a blue buff to retaliate with this. That could be a very, very bad situation if you're Kog'Maw. Even though he's only one, uh, 0, 1, and 0, and is only a couple CS behind that Kennen now that he has some free farm underneath him. Blue buff Kennen, spam and shurikens, that cooldown the cooldown on the ultimate is going to be a lot lower. That's oh, like but see here, bottom lane. Oh, I'm sorry, but she, Leona went in with her E missing. Her Leah, she wouldn't die down the lane. Vayne's gonna go back in and try to put some damage into him. An ultimate comes out, and a knight coming down onto this Vayne. And Vayne getting the ultimate out from Lulu. An exhaust comes out on the Corky. Corky taking a bit of damage. Now Corky going down. Coming from the river is that Nautilus who tried to dredge line in. He did pick up the kill, stealing it from his AD carry. However, Shen comes down to try to save him with the ultimate onto Lulu, but it wasn't soon enough. Yeah, I really don't know. Nautilus is kind of going for the kill secure in that place in case Vayne couldn't get it, but it looked like the animation was in the air for Vayne to actually pick up the kill. Nautilus a little trigger happy at that dredge line that picked up the kill and really didn't make it worth it for Vayne at this point. Shen's actually going to go and take some tower damage, try to melt down this Kong while he's got to be careful though. Kong one of the champions that can really put up a fight against him with that bio arcane barrage. He is getting melted down very, very quickly. That's the most damage I've seen Shen take all game, all because of that tower <laughs> Kong and Leona was right there for the stun and crowd control. So not not the best idea from TK Rain, but still, uh, 
I guess he put a little bit of damage on Kalma, but Kalma's uh, just kind of farming up, and he's going to eventually go back to his middle lane anyway, so not really worth it for Shen there. No, uh, not worth it for Shen, but it was a good play to try to save that Lulu when it was. While the play was going on, it was good to come teleport down there. Just yes. that cast time on it was just too long for him to make it down there in time he to probably, you know do any kind of work. He probably should have just went back and maybe stolen an enemy creep camp in the jungle or something. Or maybe even just come up towards this middle lane where Mundo's just taking free reign over this tower because Kennen's gone top to cover Shen and Mundo's got that down to half HP already. Excuse me. Yeah, no, fantastic <laughs> job by Mundo walking around here. Through the jungle, up to 82 CS at 12 minutes into this game. He's actually ahead of the top lane, Shen, which is not, you know, interesting for a jungler, but he's just so quick to be able to farm out lanes that have been pushed out. Meanwhile, this Kog'Maw, he has picked up his Sorcerer's Shoes and a Tear of the Goddess with 196 bonus mana on it. So, really going for that mana build. Love to see what he decides to pick up after this. But he had just gone back, only sitting on 300 gold. So, I'm curious of what item build he can go on I with this Kog'Maw. I don't know, but Mundo's in this bottom lane coming in. And ultimate goes down onto Vayne. They're going to tower dive through Lulu. Otter is finally going to pick up one of those kills in the bottom lane. So, there he goes, getting himself back into the game with two kills and three deaths now. So, a little bit ahead in the CS where Vayne's actually going to try to come back in. Vayne, this Vayne has balls of steel. She's actually going to tag Cork with a lot of damage, picking up a kill, then flashing out of the way of the Leona E. No Zenith Blade oh. for you. So uh, that's the first ballsy effort by Vayne I've seen come out ahead for her. Oh my god, this Leona, she just unfortunately wasn't up there even though Corky went in. The team communication, just a little bit lacking there. If Leona had gone up, they could have definitely secured a kill. She is tanky enough, especially with that R, to be able to take it, you know, I'm sorry, especially with that W, to take some extra damage. It doesn't mitigate her damage, but any time that she would have been attacked, especially by Vayne, she wouldn't have taken anything, and the CC coming down would have been enough. However, Corky really should have ran and now walked forward and tried to get that kill. But in meanwhile, over here, we see Kogma in the top lane getting quite a bit of damage down. Turning around, putting some damage in here. That's a kill for the Kennen. Meanwhile, um, Oracle's on this Nautilus to walk around and stop any of those wards. So this game, you know, really starting to run away for the purple team. Yeah, Nautilus has those boots of mobility, so he is a roaming machine right now. Like I said, he is a crowd control bot out of the jungle. He just runs in, does massive amounts of crowd control, and then kind of walks away. Staggering Blow has a stun. Dredge Line, of course, is just like a Blitzcrank pull, and then his E is going to be slowing down people in a little bit of a growing area of effect, so it's really, really powerful to have him just kind of come in and crowd control, pick up assist. He has an Oracle's Elixir to deny vision, so now it's going to be an ever-present threat of where's this crowd control going to come in? When's it coming in? Do I have to be ready uh, for it? Bottom lane down here, I'll vein his popped your ultimate, get art in, providing him some damage down. We see an ultimate coming out of Leona that has not hit anybody. So, an, you know, almost an engage come out of there. I really thought that Leona would be able to like, actually grab somebody, but she's just placing all her spells in the wrong location. This Leona has not been able to hit very many good E to Q combos. So, no, she unfortunate, for, unfortunate for Corky that her his lane is uh, moving this way, but he's doing a fantastic job of keeping up with this um, 88 CS to Vayne's 98 CS. So even though being t um, 10 CS down, he is does have two kills and one assist under his belt. So he's keeping up, you know, pretty pretty well with this Vayne, even though the Vayne is getting fed a number of assists. And the thing is, too, uh, you can't really blame Leona for placing the ultimate there because 99% of the time in the situation we've seen so far, Vayne would have been going forward in that case, but that was the one time we've seen her go backwards and Leona predicted it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leona just has have been having a really hard time placing any of her E's in the proper location. Kog'Maw getting caught in the jungle up here, though. We see the blue buff on Nautilus now with a dredge line Q. E combo ultimate out of Kennen. That is a dead Kog'Maw. Is that a flash on Kog'Ma too? Or I don't know. I see the flash went through a very, very quick cycle of cooldown, so I guess maybe no, it was there was no answer. flash down. Nope, no flash. He still has that up over here. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the purple team now getting the free dragon out of this for that kill on this um, just roaming Kog'Ma. He decided, I'm assuming he went to check to see if blue was up, maybe? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Which, interesting choice for him is being a squishy and having no escapes for him to be able to go out there without having your jungler in the way. But now this Nautilus is going to walk around, clear some wards, and they have the whole map controlled at this point. We don't see. I don't. If I'm looking around, we only have one blue ward up in the top of uh, brush. Brush. However, have... Shen going in down uh, um, up here on this Vladimir. Vladimir actually has quite a bit of life now thanks to that Hextech uh, revolver. But Shen just be able to get anything back he wants and attacking so quickly with that wit sand. He's just, he's not going anywhere. No, and the thing is, blue team does have a couple wards over by blue buff. I think that's what Kalmo was doing when he uh, wanted to Bottom go lane down here, nice E combo comes out of that. Leona puts damage in. Oh, um, now. Kogma coming around from the backside, an ultimate coming down, another ultimate coming out of from Lulu. Picking up the kill is Otter onto Vayne. Now Lulu is going to have to get out of here, but I do not believe she's going to make it. 
No, no. Kalma actually teleporting into the ward they had in the bush. There's a ward on bottom and a ward over by the blue buff. As I was trying to say, that ward became very, very effective in that fight because it let them come down and pick up kills in the bottom lane. This is going to allow that Corky to start getting back into this kill-wise. That vein, 2, 3, and 4. Corky is 3, 4, and 2. He has basically the same CS as she does. Although Vayne went for a Riggles Lantern, a little bit more of a sustainy build, despite having a character that can give her a shield and give her extra HP through that ultimate, whereas Leona's more of an aggressive support with a non sustainy kind of build, not even a shield for that Corky. And Corky has opted to go for straight damage with the BF sword. So Corky at this point in time is going to actually start putting out a little bit more DPS than Vayne, although Vayne is almost near completion of that Phantom Dancer. Uh, Vayne actually opting to level up her Q over Condemn, so she's not doing a lot of damage with that E when she puts anyone on the wall. It's just for crowd control at this point. Putting three points in the Silver Bolt, which isn't what you normally see a vein do is that condemn as you level it up, especially in the bottom lane, it's going to do quite a bit of damage. Over top, and we saw a nice depth charge coming out from Nautilus in the top by Shen. Vladimir is super, super low, dropping a Hemo Plague out of desperation. I don't really think that was worth it. Mundo's not going to be able to come in there and take advantage of the passive damage amplification. So, uh, just a quick kill picked up on Vladimir. Didn't know that Nautilus is in the top bush here, even though they knew that Mundo was in the bottom bush over by River. So, uh, Mundo like, kind of ducked out for half a second, and that was all they needed for Vladimir to get blown up by the two very, very tanky characters coming from the Purple Squad. You know, fantastic job. This uh, Nautilus coming around and doing it, doing his work, even though he uh, you know, was a little bit behind early starting at level 4, but those ganks have now brought him back to level 11, not too far behind this Mundo, who, you know, Mundo's going to hit level 12, so he's only one level behind the Mundo at this point, but up in the number of assists that he has when he's 1-0 and 6 to Mundo's 1-0 and 2. So, you know, they... Pretty much even. However, he's just doing more crowd control and more than this Mundo can do. Oh yeah, and that's one thing that Mundo really doesn't have out of the jungle. Besides his infective cleavers, his crowd control is pretty much nil. He is really good at reducing it against him, but like I said, Nautilus, all of his... Oh, but over here we see an ultimate coming down and... Wow! Blow up. Woo! Woo! That combo had no life in like half a second. No, absolutely not. Giving the purple team the turret. So that's one tournament or turret here at almost 20 minutes into the match. It's, uh, 30k gold to 23k gold for the purple team. Up 7k gold at this point. Really forcing their dominance over here. Um, Vayne doing a fantastic job with that Riggles. You know, it's given her enough sustain on top of that um, zeal. To just do, you know, she's doing quite a bit of damage. I suppose when you're leveling up your Silver Bolt, you don't really have to worry about having that extra AD damage. No, and that is what the Phantom Dancer build is going to take advantage of. By getting additional attack speed, she's going to rely on the passive of Silver Bolt a little bit earlier on in the game when it's not dealing as much damage to champions because they have less HP, but it's still dealing a decent amount of damage to compensate the fact that she has double Doran's blade. She didn't really pick up a pickaxe or a BF sword. It's not near the same amount of damage, but in combination with everything, it could still do a decent amount. And that is why Phantom Dancer is very, very powerful on Vayne. More so towards the late game, but she's kind of starting to build for that late game already. So she's going to be able to stack damage on characters like this Dr. Mundo and Vladimir who have very high HP counts on the blue side that silver bolt stack early might do a lot more damage than say a flat pickaxe could have done for her when she went to pick that up sure. now, the riggles lantern choice it's interesting she was a little bit behind on CS, now picking it off, now getting a little bit ahead of herself because of it. So I like it for the choice of farming and sustain in lane. But we're probably going to see her sell that off relatively, you know, within the next 20 minutes or so. If she picks up an Infinity Edge, and then I could see her selling it right out of the way for a Bloodthirst or something like that. Yeah, she'll need to sell it for the BF Sword. That'll give her a little bit extra damage than it will late game. She won't need the armor quite anymore. Lots of pings going down over here in the... Um Purple pings coming down over here saying, I know everyone is around you. A vein for overextended quite a bit, though, farming up. Now she has to force to run back well, to see if Corky and Lona can take um, control of the situation. Nice clear lance comes out, forcing the blue team back. So Vayne being saved by the support being in the correct position. Mm -hmm. And that ward that saw everything going down literally just expired, too. So, uh... Blue team thinks there's a ward in that bush and knows that they know they're there. Meanwhile, the ward is completely gone. They actually had to put a new one down, though. So, very good rewarding job by Lulu. Blue buff is going to go to Vayne instead of Nautilus, instead of Lulu, instead of uh, Kennen. So, very interesting to see Vayne picking that up. I think Vayne is just on auto attack mode right now. She's <laughs> like, I have Silver Bolt. I have ridiculous attack speed with the completed Phantom Dancer. I have a Riggles Lantern so I could proc against all these minions in the jungle anyway. I'm just going to run around. Looks like Vayne actually was doing some counter jungle. They start taking mini golems. She takes the blue buff. She's warding around the jungle area with that Riggles Lantern. So she's actually being very, very proactive in her 
overextension, but at the same time, she still has to be very careful because we've seen some ganks on bottom lane already, like these three people coming down here. And just because she has Nautilus or Lulu constantly hovering around, kind of clearing out wards and just roaming through the river, she's staying like this kind of has this false sense of security where the enemy team could fall upon her, and I don't think there's much she could do about it, but they're just right. being scared off of the fact that they're so behind at this point. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Now over purple team taking this dragon. That'll be the third dragon for the purple team in the span of the entire game. 22 minutes and 26 seconds go down. We'll see you again at 28, 26. Mm -hmm. Ping's going down a top lane. I think that's the big next big uh, gl uh, global objective will be Baron here. If they get a couple kills, I guarantee the purple team's going to be walking over there to try to get it taken care of. We do see Nautilus sitting on Australia's Reverie and Boots Mobility, so he can be very fast catching anybody. Actually walking into the jungle, getting his passive and an E down onto Otter. Um, Etsu coming in, an ultimate coming out of that cannon to blow everybody up. Um, Leona coming in here, I'm able to try to save somebody, but that's a nearly a triple kill. And like I was just saying, now they can be able to. Now they're either going to do Baron or they're going to push it out for the middle lane because now they they have five people up to per, uh, blue teams only two. I can't, I can't but feel like we haven't really talked about this Kennen all that much. He's 8-0 right now, Potophobia. <laughs> Almost 200 CS, about 23 minutes into the game. Will the Ancient Abyssal Scepter. In addition to this, he has an Amplifying Tome, some wards to keep giving himself map awareness, and has a giant spell on top of Sorcerer's Shoes. So he is tanky, he is shredding magic resistance, he is dealing ability power damage, and he's helping his entire team spell vamp with that Will of the Ancients. So it's, oh, this Kennen is just doing so much work in that middle lane against Kalma. Like I said, it was going to be an interesting matchup for Kalma in the early levels. That early yep. kill for Kennen, even though he was behind in CS because of jungle ganks and just because of how much he was able to harass down Kalma and Kalma's tendency to roam at this point in the game with teleport, it just let Ken and take that level one kill and go completely nuts with it. Completely nuts. He's just been a force in this entire time. He pops an ultimate, someone dies. It doesn't matter. The, it, their team is so squishy over here for the blue team that once that Kenan gets in there, it pops the ultimate. And if he, ha you know, he decides to go for his own DS hourglass, he's not going to die, and he's going to do so much damage to the entire team. Mm -hmm. That it's, you know, it, it, it's just going to be. He's going to completely wreck everybody because nobody has any life on that team. And the sad thing is Dr. Mundo, the person that probably has the most life on the team right now, hasn't even been built really, really tanky. He built a Wits End on top of his Runes and Masteries. He has four Magic Resistance already. But Kennen has an Abyssal Scepter, which is going to be reducing uh, the enemy Magic Resistance by 20. Sorcerer's Shoes penetrating plus 20, and that's just a lot of damage. And this Shen, though, a little bit out of position as the entire blue team finally gets it together. Leona's going to be the one ending the killing spree, though, and I don't quite think that's the champion you want getting the killing spree goal at this point in the game for blue. No, they, they don't need that. Leona definitely was not the one to get it, but, you know, they secured the kill, and that's all that really matters. Everyone get this uh, Siskel in that over here. But it looks like we're going to have them go ahead and taking Baron as Purple Team's going to push down as hard as they can. Um, do they have a ward over here to see? They do not have a ward over here on the... Um on Baron, so blue team getting that Baron they out had, over they here. They had a ward, but Mundo took it out, and that's what prompted yeah. them to go into the middle lane to push. But at this point, I guess they just think that they can just push faster than they can come back and try to stop it, because look at Vayne over here just shredding this tower, and they've also got to get this middle inhibitor for that Baron buff, so, you know, is it worth giving it up? We'll have to see what happens in the next team fight. The thing is, though, now it's going to force Blue Team to be defensive with their Baron buff instead of being proactive and aggressive with it, which is something you don't want to have with your Baron buff. Very excellent job by Purple Team identifying the fact that they could take down an inhibitor in the amount of time it took Blue Team to take Baron. Because of this now, like I said, they're going to have to play extremely defensive, and you don't want to be doing that. If they push a lane, it's most likely going to be middle lane, and with super creep right. advantage on your side, and about, you know, what is it, 9 kill advantage on your side, 13k gold advantage on your side, and a six tower advantage on your side you're willing to give up this middle tower that has basically no hp you might even be possible to give up this second uh tower in the middle lane before you actually well, force a fight you, yeah you got to think about it from blue's perspective as well though blue now i'm going to try to play super aggressive as they have baron but it's also getting away from the team that has fed you know more kills than they have so as long as the enemy team does not have the baron and you do that is you know giving you a bigger chance to either defend yourself and come back or at least you know keep your and it keeps yourself into the game you know, longer than if the other team would have had it. Because if, if Purple Team would have gotten Baron at any point in time, they would have been able to push very hard and take it on more than just an inhib. The thing is, uh, this uh, Purple Team here has Shen, and we can see the Blue Team doing that kind of Tower Siege thing that I was talking about between the Corky Ultimates and the Cogma Ultimates. So that's going to be very, very devastating for uh, Purple Team to have to deal with this. Look how much damage you're taking just from all this poke. Nautilus is going to get a dredge line, though, down here. Ponophobia taken away. 
Oh, uh, 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 nothing really going on here, unfortunately. Uh, Mundo just being able to pop his ultimate, come right back into full life. Kennen looked like he wanted to go in. Kennen wants oh. to go in because the Shen is on the bottom backdooring. That is one thing he can do because he has the ultimate. He can be yes. ever present in his team's team fights. So if he needs to, we saw him pushing top lane, getting this tower down very, very far with a giant creep wave. He's on bottom lane. Now purple teams is going to prevent blue team to try from going back to defend. And that is a little bit of dilemma that they had. Like I said, if they're pushing, they have to push this middle lane to go against these super minions. Otherwise, it's going to naturally push itself down again by itself. Now right. that they've been forced back because because Shen was one of, basically one of the best split pushers in the game because of his ability to just ever be in a team fight while pushing. Now they've found themselves in this defensive position anyway, and the only thing they really have to show for it is the tower that had about 150 HP to begin with. <laughs> That's unfortunate. They weren't able to push down that tower even though they were poking out here. This vein is a tower melting machine, having that Phantom Dancer and BF Sword sitting on 250 AD, leveling up her True Bolts to uh, th uh, five levels now and her tumble onto five levels as well. So every time she tumbles, she's going to be adding quite a bit of AD, 180, 108 bonus AD, giving her 300 and, so, uh, you know, just a little over 300 AD every time she tumbles. This Shen Mima is just continuing to wail away on the bottom on the bottom inhibitor. That's going to force Vladimir away from here. I don't know that Vladimir's had a lot of trouble at Shen in the top lane. I don't think he's going to have much more success against an inhibitor. So Corky's actually going to have to come down here. Now they're shifting focus from top inhibitor, bottom inhibitor, just straight down onto the bottom inhibitor. And now they're just completely, you know, pushing and pulling away at blue team. Lulu, you know, kind of split off from the rest of her team over here. Oh, the Leona ultimate comes out of here as Leona puts down the ultimate, but Kennen popping his ult to take out number of people. Vayne just doing the work, eing into Qs to be able to take it out. Kennen picking up the extra kill. Vladimir is going to melt the night went down onto this combo. We'll see if he's can get a dredge line out of him. Yes, a flash comes out, but a no dredge line quite yet. There it is, and that's a kill for the purple team who lost nobody in that entire engagement. Yeah, actually, uh... Kennen was the only one that got very low after the Akathian surprise went off. That was just brilliant. At this point in time, like I said, they funneled blue team into playing extremely defensive. They have such a gold lead and everything right now. Vayne kind of getting blown up there by Otter, but Otter's going to have to get out of there as quickly as possible because I just think at this point, Purple team has everything swinging in their favor. Two entire lanes down. These Nexus turrets are pushed. No one on the blue squad is up except for Leona and Corky at this point. Corky's actually going down. Now it's just Leona. Mundo's not even going to be up before this Nexus can fall. And I think that's just going to be a good game. Shen securing the win with the ultimate on Nautilus. They're focusing off the uh, the Nexus for a little bit. It's already solo with the Super Minions Ponophobia. I think it's just good game. Yeah, it is good game. No, no button? No, no button. Oh, There's two days in a row. No, but no, it's three days in a row, actually. Well, two days that we've casted together in a row. Yes, two days in a row that we have cast. I have not had my GG button on me. I am a failure. I'm sorry, Ponophobia. I am sorry, Razor Weapons. You are the worst caster ever. Oh, no. <laughs> But taking a quick look at the recap screen, we can see here a Corky with 210 CS was doing a really, really good job. He did have, uh, Vayne did have 217. She was constantly staying a little bit above that Corky. Corky did perish in the bottom lane at the beginning of the game due to that tri bush. He was being a human ward and he found five members of the team. So, in one respect, he was doing a really good job being a ward. And in the second respect, he's doing a really bad job of being an AD carry and not dying. So unfortunately, that and the kill on Leona when they're going for the jungle invade, even though they didn't take anything from the jungle, and that uh, that Mundo had a little bit of a lead on Nautilus's jungle, Nautilus with the successful ganks compared to Mundo's no successful ganks, he was 0-2-3, and three, whereas Nautilus was 3-0-12. Oh, Nautilus had an early Oracle's elixir because of this. He was able to go around his jungle, even though at the beginning, like you said, he was kind of just dirtling around waiting for his creep to respawn when Mundo took them away from him. But still, he was able to get himself back into this game because of excellent positioning. Kama decided that he was having a little bit of a hard time against Kennen, used his teleport to actually roam around the map. We saw him get a really good gank on the bottom lane. But let's just let Kennen get too much free for him. Is Kennen 244 CS, the highest in the game? He is 11 0 and 4. That's legendary. He has not died, and that is a huge problem. <laughs> Absolutely huge problem. We saw how well he melted everybody that came into, you know, any kind of out of position they had. But it all started in the very beginning of that game where Corky was caught out of position, followed by Leona, who was sitting over in the brush over by Red. And it was just very unfortunate for the bottom lane of the blue team that they did not, you know, Leona was just missing a lot of her EDQ combos. But every time they went in and they actually did, was able to land them, the, they forced right back with an exhaust on the Corky at the right time, allowing Vayne to pick up the kill. 
Yeah, that no exhaust in the bottom lane really hurt them. Even though they're going for an aggressive comp, like I mentioned during the cast, uh, Corky picking up Ignite was meant to secure kills, but because Leona was not landing any of her combos, she wasn't landing those sunlight passives, which is going to be exploding for additional damage when Corky were to cast a spell on them. It would explode and deal additional sunlight damage. Corky, that would have triggered from Ignite too. So if that little combination down there would have been a lot of damage to secure kills, but unfortunately not landing the combos meant two stacks of sunlight that did not go off, which was a lot of potential damage on the bottom lane. Yeah, every time it procs, it's extra magic damage, which most bottom lanes do not are not spec for uh, to you know to play against, and they do not build any kind of defensive items. So that's why what makes Leona such a great uh, player. Optimus Tom, do we have another game to cast over this, or is this a best of one all the way to the end of the night? To be completely honest, I have no idea. Maybe everybody listening should head over with me to check out tinyurlcom slash rywjudgment so that we can find out if this is a best of three, if it's only a best of one, and where you guys can find the next match. R-Y.